Guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another Aspie World podcast episode. Good to be having awesome guests on the show. And I uh, hope you guys are all good and, 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 and doing well. Uh, we're a little bit into the new year now, so happy new year to everybody, and it's all over with. So now time to smash your goals and be awesome. So if you are listening and you haven't subscribed yet on the podcast, I can see you listening but not subscribed, so make sure to hit the subscribe button. The same here on YouTube. Okay, so today I'm interviewing a person called Gray Rogers, um, who is the paternal nephew of an SAS veteran, which is really interesting. Um, the founder that founded the Swaddling Coddling Out of Swaddling Co- yeah. There you go. I can't that's even say great. that. I can't even say that. Um, one no, of the first peer led groups, like, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah which it's is really interesting. Um, you've done a lot of work with the National Assistance Society campaigning, which shaped the Autism Act for 2009, um, and also uh, working frontline through the pandemic. A bunch of other kind of crazy cool stuff so great do you want to like just let, let's go through it what 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 have you done and and, and how did you do it oh goodness uh, i don't even know where to start to be honest but, Let, let's uh, talk about the asperger society let's let's go through that uh well that was uh, founded by uh, two other friends of mine and the, we we, have, we founded it because the local autism support group was shutting down and nothing was really filling the void and it just came up casually in conversation maybe i should do something mm-hmm. and i just took it from there really I, I i pulled together community resources and things like that and yeah that's been going for 10 years now it's still go it's still going right now yeah it's still going right now in fact we're uh, in fact we're sort of uh, branching out doing outreach work in other places in other in other regions so yeah it's getting better dude i love that like i love that you know um there's a there's a guy who uh, lives near me uh, called Ben. He's a really cool guy, and he's also on the spectrum. And me and him are, are setting up our own kind of, um, you know, social group, autism social group locally. And so I'm really inspired by by people who have done it because it's it's not an easy feat to do. Like you know, you've got to you've got to organize it. So, so how did you find organizing something like this? You know, because uh, it's obviously you guys go ten years, so it must be at some scale right now. Uh, yeah, it is. Oh, uh, well, we started out uh, just uh, you, you know, like any support group, we met other organizations doing similar things and uh, I just sort of took that on board and when time did come to go out and do our own thing we just pulled our sources together and they were really supportive about the idea and yeah we just uh, put our heads together and took it from there really. Is it still the three core main dudes like is it you and the two other people who have done it like are you still the main core three people running it? Yeah, we're still the main free, main from the free musketeers. I like to call ourselves, but, uh, <laughs> but uh, the free amigos actually. Yeah, <laughs> three but, amigos. Yeah, well, obviously, lots changed since then. You know, there's some people. Are, you know, someone's talking about you know maybe maybe moving on and, and someone else coming on board. But uh, no, there's still uh, interest in the group. Good, that's awesome. Does, and is it still growing? Like, what's the demand like for something like this? Uh, well, quite a lot. There's a lot of uh, yeah, like mental health drop-in centres closing down, and uh, and uh, yeah, there's there's a real demand for so- more social inclusion within the immediate community. So, did you find? Uh, yeah, did you find a that- rise after the pandemic? Because you know the pandemic kind of shut a lot of things down, and people were kind of clutching at straws to find support. Did you find a big increase after the pandemic? Oh, yeah, yeah. We had a lot of new faces when we started up again. Well, a lot of old faces, but new faces as well. And, uh, yeah, there's still, there's still interest in, uh, in, you know, social inclusion and moving on from the traumatic events of the pandemic. So, yeah, we're, we're playing off of that at the moment. Amazing. All right. So I want to talk about the magazine Asperger's United. Like, talk, talk to me about this. Like, what, what is that? Well, it's a magazine. It was uh, published. It's published. Well, it is published by the National Autistic Society. It's been going on for years now. They changed their name recently to the Spectrum. But uh, yeah, I, I contributed some stuff to them uh, back when I was still coming to terms with my diagnosis and got some mm-hmm. really good feedback off of that. And that just inspired me to do more creative writing. Fantastic. Because you did uh, some nonfiction articles for them, didn't you? Yeah, yeah, I did some non-fiction for them, yeah. So, and you also took part in the National Autistic Society's I Exist campaign, right? So tell me a bit yeah. about that. Well, it was another call out for uh, for written pieces, artwork, you know, whatever helped you express 
then you, you know your experiences and that and uh I wrote a new piece, sort of going off the old piece, and I submitted it to them, and it got published on their website for all to see. And I actually didn't find out until years later that uh, my piece, along with many other pieces, contributed to the formation of the Autism Act. That's, That's incredible, dude. That's like that is amazing. Yeah, that is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, it is. I didn't even know until like a few years ago, just before the pandemic, because the way it was worded, because, uh, yeah, things had moved on a lot since then. So, yeah. I mean, you know, do you ever kind of take a step back and go, like, whoa, I've done a lot of things. Like, how does it feel like to be doing contributing so much thought to the autism community? Uh, it feels great, uh, actually, because, uh, yeah, I like to tell my story obviously it's not going to be seen as everyone else is but uh you know there are people out there who with sort of stories similar to your own and they are out there yeah you might find it might take a while to find those people and riff off them but uh yeah we're out there doing your thing right i got a question so um i read that you did some work for this autism information and advocacy service right or sorry advice service which mm-hmm. um kind of led to joining the Derbyshire Autism Partnership Board to roll out to the UK government's autism, well, the adult autism strategy. Do you want to kind of condense that into something that's more coherent? <laughs> uh, yeah, it, uh, well, uh, like I said, I ran the group for many years, maintained a very good uh, website and internet presence. So when lockdown did happen, there was there was just something up there, out there for people to look up. And it was around about early 2021, I started getting all these uh, emails off of uh, people interested in my work for some bizarre reasons. So I had my first Zoom meetings with them, and apparently, yeah, they were, it was a doctor. Actually, I didn't realize at the time, but it was a doctor. So, uh, yeah, she uh, she approached me and, and said, would you like to come and work with us on this uh, partnership board and even do some uh, consultation and look over some uh, look over some paperwork see if it's accessible as well and uh, yeah I just took it from there really it was also around this time I uh, I did my first ever podcast interview with uh, with labeled they had, okay yeah yeah. Th- yeah two really nice women who have gone on to yeah gone to appear on ITV news and things like that so yeah, yeah that yeah, was yeah. my first uh, podcast interview. Oh. Yeah, did you've done like so much? Like you've done so much, right? Like, and I feel like you're really humble in the fact, like you're not like, hey, you know, look all the stuff. I know sometimes I feel like I'm a bit braggadocious with the things, like I have an award and I have a book out and all this kind of stuff. You're so humble in it, and I love that because like I don't really care. Like, yeah, yeah I got my awards and stuff like that. But, like, I don't; those things don't drive me. You know what I mean? It, helping people drives me, and I feel like you, you also have that. But I love that you're so humble. You're like. You know, I just did to say, you're so blasé. It's like, dude, you like helped shape stuff to help people in this country. It's crazy, kid. Like, that's, I could only have a dream of helping people like that. Like, you, you, you're you like 10x me already, dude. I love that. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm t- uh, so I, I once joked that was too humble for my own good. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, so, ju- it's actually an honor to have you on here because, like, you know, I, I have some really interesting, inspiring guests, but, you know, you're by far one of the, one of the most inspiring and, and, and amazing people I've had on here. Well, we haven't even got started yet. <laughs> it's a story that I could tell, yeah. <laughs> hey, I know. That's what I mean. I think like we could even do a, a bloody series on it, you know? I, I do have a, I have a question. I have a question. Um, and you, you, we, you spoke kind of about this, which leads into this question. I just recorded a video that's going to be out today, which is... So when we're recording this, is Thursday, the 8th of February, 2024. I got a video going out tonight all about Hans Asperger and this whole controversy surrounding Hans Asperger and the and so I analyzed the the paper the that was published, the journal, and I go through it. So it's a twenty six minute video. So when it winds up for rolling up their sleeves and sitting down with a pot of tea, they can watch it. Um and I go through it and I feel that there is some unjustification for the amount of abuse that the term Asperger's gets within the autism community. Now, since they changed the name from, you know, the Asperger's United to uh Spectrum and they also, uh, you, you also run, uh, you know, society, the Asperger's Society. How how do you feel about it? Talk to me about this. Like, how do you feel about this whole witch hunt against people using the term Asperger's? Uh, well, we haven't had any problems yet, and uh, 
And yeah, oh goodness, I, I have said, I said before, history never happens in the right order, does it? But I think it's good people are learning from it. And yeah, sometimes, yeah, and bad things do happen. The best thing you can do is learn from it, really. I mean, from my point, yeah, and from my point of view, back then when we first founded the group, it was around the time Susan Boyle came out as uh, having the Spurges, and you know, we just played off of that, really. So, you know, when we when we when we were, when we were starting doing public publicity and people started asking questions about what Spurges was and things like that, we just said, "Oh, Susan Boyle's got it." So, uh, no, so yeah, we, that I don't know if that's been part of our success or not, but uh, no, we're very forward thinking, and you know, especially in the terminology we use in our uh, our bank statements and paperwork and stuff like that, and uh, yeah. Yeah, in the beginning, we tend to use words like vulnerable adults and stuff like that. But now we use words like neurodiverse and, mm-hmm. you know, and stuff like that. And uh, we're at, yeah, we've at, we've currently, we, we, are, we are actually currently had a consultation with a, with a, with a theatre artist about uh, how our, how our community group presents. And there was discussion about, uh, about changing the name as well. So, uh, yeah, we're open to that idea to be honest with you and interesting like i i'm not I, i'm not for forcing people to do anything like, i don't think you know i i don't think there's a problem using the term asperger's personally because i think that you know many people were diagnosed with it prior to 2013 mm-hmm. and the, interestingly enough the reason it was taken out the dsm uh diagnostic criteria was nothing to do with the information that was exposed on you know potential collusion with um socialist groups in, in Vienna, right? It was all to do with uh, accessing support under a different nomenclature through diagnostic reports. So it was really interesting that the, you've got this army of militants who force people to change their names from Asperger's to something else like autism or spectrum. And I, I feel like, yeah, I could go on about it for for a long time. And I think there's a lot of kind of like bullying that happened in the community. So I was wondering how you, how you, what your take was on that. I won't change my, you know, I'll still label videos Asperger's. I'll still label my, my brand Aspie. Like I'm not changing that. Like there's no need. You know what I mean? Do you agree or do you feel like you need to change it? Cause it's interesting. Well, there's uh well, there's uh, there's always going to be reasons to update names and things like, uh, that I feel. I think the important thing is just to be, you know, forward thinking. You know, respect the opinions of uh, of, uh, of people. And yeah, some people do, you know, weaponize their causes and use it as an excuse to bully other people into their way of thinking. But that's not that's not that's never gonna it's never gonna help anything. That's just gonna stoke resentment and reasons of force, negative stereotypes and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So uh, yeah, if if we do. If we do well, if we do change our name, it'll be through very good consultation and uh, other reasons. We we started taking the uh, what's the apostrophe thing called out the out the name Asperger's because so it wasn't yeah. really a name; it was more of a term, so term. it wasn't really That's correct re- yeah. referencing a person. You know, because yeah, yeah, because yeah, the term yeah, you're right. The term Asperger's yeah, in the way isn't yeah, even the way you spell Asperger's is uh, is different. Some people spell it, you know, just as it is, or or I've named as in you know Parkinson's. Even though I think it's funny when you name conditions after after a person, after and a the, person, yeah, because a person really. doesn't have it, you know. Apart from like you know, um, yeah. there's one, um, uh, uh, the what's the the AL the ALS guy, um, the baseball player, you know, he he that's named after him, isn't it? Um, uh, oh well, they they call they nickname it as ALS, but it's got another name, right? Um, Oh, I can't remember the guy's name. It was me telling you. It's named after this guy. I can't remember his name. Um, but yeah, the the guy, so they call it the syndrome because he was like the first guy. I think Luke Luke Garrick or something like that. His name was Luke Garrick's disease. They call it Luke Garrick's disease, but they, it's called ALM, right? Which is like, a, or ALS. ALM? ALS? The ice bucket challenge things. Remember all that? When everyone was dumping. Yeah, no, yeah my, sister, my, my sister did that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just remembered. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So we we did it and we donated a bunch of money uh, to ALS. And you know what's interesting about that? That was one of the most impressive uh, social campaigns or viral social campaigns ever because it spread like wildfire from celebrities to everybody. And the money that everyone donated actually was used to find a cure for Luke Garrick's disease. Like, it, it worked. Like, it, oh. on the space of, like, five years or ten years, it, 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 like, honestly, blew my mind. I was like, holy smokes. Like, this is, like, 
not just impressive, like yeah. ridiculously cool. Um, okay, so I, 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 have talk- to, I have to tell my sister that because uh, I don't think yeah. she even was that. She did it years ago, but I'm just remembering yeah. it now. And uh, yeah, I think I'll tell her next time. Yeah, tell her. It really, yeah. really good. I mean, just, just, inc- just incredible, you know. Excuse me, I'm being a part of that. Was just like wow. Okay, so talk to me about what, what are you up to? You know, now what? What's your, what are you? What are you involved with now? What, what's your new projects? What are you aiming towards? Like, get me up to date. Uh, oh goodness! Uh, so uh, what have I what haven't I talked about so far? Yeah, like I said, I, I became a trustee on the Autism Partnership Board, which is only possible because of the magic of Zoom. Anyway, because Derbyshire is quite a rural country, and there's parts of Derbyshire even I've never been to because it's very yeah. rural community. But I think it's good that uh, you, uh, yeah, I'm very tech savvy as it is, so uh, so it, it's possible for someone like me to, to do that kind of stuff now. But not long after that, uh, People Express, who actually did the co production with for many years, they actually asked me to come and do a, be a trustee on their partnership board based on my work with just them. And I accepted, and I've done that for uh, for two, three years now. Wow. So, so I'm, you- the, uh, I'm the neurodivergent voice on the board and talking about you know, how we can bring arts to the community, make it more accessible, and how to be forward-thinking. Uh, yeah, I'm, I, you learn on the job, so I'm learning to be more progressive, more forward-thinking. And uh, I love it, we, I love it. Yeah, and we do talk about, you know, yeah, community, what people are feeling and stuff like that as it is. That's really cool. Uh, one of the interesting things uh, about you is you're male-presenting non-binary and identifies as neurodivergent. Do you feel that there's a link between... Um, gender dysmorphia or gender, I, um, gender identity crisis, or I'm not entirely sure of the technical terms yet, um, and neurodivergency. Uh, I think when you're neurodivergent, you struggle with imposter syndrome as it is. Because when I was first diagnosed with autism, it was back at a time when people were like. Well, you don't look autistic, or, or, or everyone's a bit autistic and stuff oh, like that. Stumbles, yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah. So that, so yeah, I think, yeah, I think, I think when it comes to identity, it just boils down to stereotypes and cultural norms and and things like that. And so, I it, it inspired me to dig deep and really think about, you know, how I relate to, to the world, and, and yeah. And I, I've been fans of the things in the past which some people would say were girly or just for girls and stuff like that, even though I didn't quite understand why. So I just sort of dug deep and reached the conclusion I was uh, non-binary. Interesting. But can that, so, because I'm confused, like, I don't actually know what that means. I mean, like, because... You've put down. You say male presenting non-binary. What, what does that actually mean? Like, what? Because can you just be a guy who likes girly things? Uh, well, I've tried that. I try, but of course, bullying and things like that, and people saying you're not a real man and stuff like that. What's wrong with uh, people? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, you look so, crazy. Exactly. That's yeah. It's yeah. It's becoming more fragmented nowadays. You know, mm. identity and who you are and stuff like that. I feel. You should be able to just do what you want. Like, like, like you know, I don't, I don't really care, you know, who people fall in love with, how many people they want in a relationship. You know, I really don't care, you know, because those things don't bother me. It's it's how you treat people and 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 what you do for the world that that bothers me. So I just had a really interesting. Cause I'm not, I I'm a little bit in the dark about like stuff like non-binary. I don't really know what that means. Um, and but I have seen a lot of talk between a lot of people in the autistic community saying, oh, it's very common in the autistic community to have this kind of like gender thing like this you know i don't know i don't know what it's called like but I, I don't really know much about it but it was just interesting that you you put that down on your um on your bio but do you find yourself you know advocating for those things as well those kind of like societal changes as well as you know being like a neurodivergent consultant are you like this non-binary guy that does this stuff you know like how does it work i just advocate from uh from my own conclusions and you know I see people out with uh, similar views and uh, you know I, I listen to them I learn from them I I think about what they've said take that on board and reach my own conclusions 
Yeah, because yeah, that, that's something that's a secret of a good discussion, I think. Yeah, I think so too. Um, yeah, it's really interesting um, because uh, I'd say that you're quite a manly guy. Like, I wouldn't say I wouldn't say that you're you're not a manly guy. You seem manly to me. Yeah, um, by nine by ninety standards. <laughs> 90s. Hey, 90s was awesome, bro. What are you talking about like, Tamagotchis, slime. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, like it was great. I yeah. don't know. I, well, you know. yeah. Yeah. I, think I love the 90s. It's changed a lot since before the COVID. You know what I mean? Yeah. I did a lot of reflecting during the pandemic. So I think a lot of people did, but I did. Yeah. I wasn't immune from it either. Yeah. It was a hard time. It was a hard time. Was it hard to advocate for autistic people during a time when you couldn't? actually put anything together socially you couldn't you know um you can i don't know meet up anywhere you couldn't um assemble anything like was it difficult uh i had a support bubble i could look after also i wore my sunflower land yard during the oh. pandemic was working so i was still you know raising awareness about you know hidden disabilities and things like that even during the even during the lockdown period Interesting, yeah. Because um, I remember having that. I had the sunflower on the other as well, and I had to use that to go to the grocery store to buy like you know groceries, obviously. Uh, but like it was, it was so important that I wore that because of the oh, it was just mayhem, wasn't it? It was just it wasn't good. I don't want to. I don't want to lift one of those again. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah, and just the whole yeah, and it was it was it was a lot of pressure. Anyway, so what 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 are your prospects for the future before we before we end this episode? What what are you wanting to like? What are you wanting to do? What do you want to achieve with autism advocacy in the future? Like, what what was your goals and dreams? Well, I didn't. Well, I was diagnosed with uh, autism at the age of twenty, so it wasn't like I had goals or dreams. Well, I did, but they changed even back then. But uh, I, I just, uh, I guess, I just in the recent years, I just said I'll, I'll use what whatever power and skills I have just to raise awareness for other people there's yeah there's many people who still don't uh, still don't understand you know they're all that that uh, archaic and all that old carcade and old-fashioned you know what I mean 100%. And, uh, so uh, yeah I'll, I'll, <laughs> yeah so I'll, I'll keep using my voice uh, you know, well I say voice but uh, whether it's in writing or on blogs or in a okay. One to one, one to ones, yeah. So, uh, yeah, I'm still, yeah, I'm, st- I'm just gonna keep doing it because I know what it feels like to, you know, be invisible to people, have people think the worst of you, and, uh, and all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'm just gonna keep talking about why my lived experience, they call it now. So, yeah, dude, you're a great person, and I really, really appreciate you coming on the show. If people want to kind of check out what you do, do you have like a website that they could visit or anything like that? Uh, yeah, uh, yeah, we have, yeah, we have a website, the uh, Swallenko Asperger Society or SAS as we just call it. Yeah, you can just Google that. I can send you the links later. Yeah, yeah sure. I, also, yeah, I also do Instagram and Facebook and things like okay. that. So, okay, yeah. cool. So if you send me over the links, I'll put them in the show notes. I'll put them in the description of the video. So people, if you want to check out uh gray's work um yeah definitely check it out they're doing amazing work and, and i i thank you so much for for being a guest today awesome that's a really good message thank you so much for being on the show yeah i've really enjoyed my time here yeah amazing thank you gray all right thank you so much